World population continues to grow, and we face a very real challenge of how to feed ourselves. The key rationale for this study is to answer the question, how will we sustain our food system as food supply diminishes and population grows? If left unchecked, the amount of hunger, malnutrition, and other food-related medical issues will worsen commensurate with population growth. 795 million people in the world do not have enough food to eat to lead a healthy, active life. That's about one in nine people on Earth. Our population growth is estimated to exceed 11 billion by the end of the century. In the last 50 years, global meat consumption has quadrupled to 300 million tons. As populations get richer, their consumption of meat, dairy, and eggs also rises. The current rate of population growth is projected to reach 9.7 billion by 2050. At this exponential rate, we will need at least 70% more meat protein than we already have. In his book, The Coming Famine, Julian Cribb's first words indicate it's time for a wake-up call. Our population is diametrically polarized between the haves and haves nots. In the last 10 years, numerous documentaries such as Food Chains, Food Inc., Fed Up, and the like have been created discussing the global food crisis. This study is being conducted to make a positive and sustainable global impact on food systems through the identification of future food needs, thereby providing nutritionally dense food options to feed the global population within the framework of environmental responsibility. We have the ability now to end world hunger. Critical attention to 17 interlinked challenges summarized by the Sustainable Development Goal Plan could end world hunger by 2030. The purpose of the study is to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. The hypothesis is, world population growth will require us to identify a sustainable solution to maintain our global food system through identification of additional sources of nutritional protein to supplement and or replace the current reliance on animal protein as the primary source of nourishment, thereby leading to a worldwide diet evolution. Despite conflict, climate change, and population growth, we can achieve zero hunger in 15 years. We have the knowledge and power today to build a world free of hunger and malnutrition, but it's going to take all of us acting together right now. Several primary sources, including the FAO report and the United Nations Study on Sustainable Agriculture, agree that our global food system has reached record production levels. The UN Sustainable Agricultural Study concludes that the developing countries rely nearly exclusively on pulses as their major source of protein due to the availability or expense of other protein sources. Conversely, the record per capita consumption of fish and animal proteins is consumed virtually exclusively by the industrialized world. The United States Senate Select Committee on Nutrition and Human Needs, chaired by Senator George McGovern, delivered the first dietary guidelines in the United States in January 1977. This report outlined that our diets have changed radically within the last 50 years with a much higher prevalence of meat and other sources high in saturated fat, cholesterol, and sugar. This dietary shift is directly linked to the leading cause of death in the U.S., including heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and hypertension. Our dietary habits are formed primarily in our youth, and poor nutrition in the first 1,000 days of life can have irreversible consequences. UNICEF is a driving force behind investigating nutrition as a key way to advance global welfare. As a topic of discussion at the G8, the United Nations Secretary General has included the goal of achieving a 40% reduction in malnourished children under 5 years old by 2025, or around 70 million children. World agricultural production, as studied by the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, Foreign Agricultural Service, FAS, indicate in their June 2016 update that the 2016-2017 global crop forecasts are falling far behind expectations. We must identify alternative sources of environmentally responsible proteins and educate our population adequately to facilitate a significant cultural impact to prevent a catastrophic global event. Leveraging crops such as pulses and balancing both global diversification and availability of fish and animal proteins will equally decrease hunger and malnutrition rates worldwide. This study will isolate challenges to the food system and provide recommendations for crop modification leading to a change in global dietary choices. The instrument utilized was a probability sampling technique due to our access to raw data sources. This produces a direct correlation to meet the requirements of a quantitative foundation using simple random sampling. The credibility of this study is directly correlative to the current and projected production volumes. The transferability of this research applies to our ability to use historical data in present production to determine the rational basis for future needs and production capabilities. The dependability of this research is determined directly by the volume of data points. 
Lastly, confirmability is directly supported by the emerging demand of the industry for increased transparency and socioeconomic responsibility. Insight into our food system allows the public community to confirm and validate the outcome of this. The purpose of the study is to identify the factors that contribute to global malnourishment and hunger. Additionally, this study also seeks to identify a joint solution between production quantities and dietary choices to sustain the world population. As such, a mixed method approach of both quantitative and qualitative research will be leveraged to support the outcome of this study. Roughly one-third of the food produced globally is wasted. Moreover, the developed countries waste much more food as the entire net food production of third world countries. Clearly, waste reduction is the primary and most logical goal. Understanding and researching human behavior has a direct impact on measuring a population's willingness to modify their own behavior. A secondary goal of the study is to determine the population's willingness to modify their own dietary choices to affect a greater positive impact on the global food system. The instrument utilized was a probability sampling technique. Access to raw data sources provides a direct correlation to meet the requirements of a quantitative foundation. Furthermore, a simple random sampling of populations was chosen because a sample frame exists and is representative of the population. Insight into the food system provides the public community to confirm and validate the outcomes of this study. The questions in the survey were structured in such a way as to gather willingness data on behavioral modifications. Behavioral choices influencing food waste quantities ties directly to maximizing our global food system. Moreover, data collected from these survey questions will defend and validate the study recommendations for food system modifications based on dietary and behavioral preferences. We grow and produce enough food for everyone on the planet, yet there are 870 million hungry people on the planet and 2.5 million children die of malnutrition every year. Worldwide, we produce 27% more food per person today than we did 50 years ago, even as the global population has more than doubled. Yet in Europe and North America, each consumer wastes 210 to 250 pounds of food per year. As millions of people go to bed hungry, half of the food produced in the United States is wasted between the farm and the fork discarded as a result of the inefficiency in the human-managed food chain. In the U.S., nearly 8% of the food is lost in production. The food industry loses 4%. Supermarkets are responsible for 6%. Restaurants contribute 15% of the food in the landfills. Households throw away nearly 25% of the food they buy. The cost of this waste is about $165 billion annually. That's more than five times as much as we spent on foreign economic aid in 2011. This waste doesn't only affect people, the environment suffers from it as well. Did you know throwing away one gallon of milk is like throwing away 1,000 gallons of water? That's because it takes that much fresh water to produce one gallon of milk. A quarter of our water used for irrigation is used on food that is wasted. So when you throw away your food, you are throwing away all the water that it takes to grow, produce, and ship it as well. On top of that, an estimated 16% of methane emissions from our landfills are caused by food waste. By saving 15% of the food we normally throw away, we can feed more than 25 million Americans every year. If we start paying attention to what we waste, we can end up saving a lot more than just leftovers.
For the quantitative portion of this research, sampling will be leveraged to get representative data points allowing inferences to be made about the general population. The sample population will be focused around the first world, middle, and upper classes. The rationale for sampling this group was that primary sources indicate two factors which support this approach. Number one, the first world accounts for the vast majority of food waste globally. Both pre-consumer and post-consumer food waste are 150 to 600 percent greater than the third world counterparts. Additionally, the first world has the economic advantage of enabling a more diverse food experience. Secondly, the third world is limited in many ways, primarily economic, from the diversity in food options as the first world. Consequently, a redistribution of resources would likely make a significant impact on malnutrition and hunger rates without modification to our global food systems. The key to a long-lasting impact on malnutrition and world hunger lies with leveraging crops and balancing both global diversification and availability of fish and animal proteins. This will equally decrease hunger and malnutrition rates worldwide. This study will isolate challenges to the food system and provide recommendations for crop modifications leading to a change in global dietary choices.